Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of request. Thank you friends so much for subscribing, likes, and supporting in the comments. And today's first story is, Bosses try to bully and gaslight me into overworking myself. I'm a self-taught software developer without formal education, which means that decent jobs can end up being quite scarce. Most of my career has been spent freelancing, which worked out great for the most part, but in 2017 I was offered a position at a relatively small, 8 full stack developers, 2 WordPress developers, and far too many managers, software development company. This position wasn't glamorous, the pay was awful, $1000 a month, and the company was 2 hours away from my house, which meant I spent 4 hours a day driving. Despite all of this, I considered the position a foot in the door and hoped it would land me a better position in the future, or at the very least I'd be able to work my way up in the company eventually. Now, when I say this company had too many managers, I mean it. There were four directors, two team leads, and not a single formal project manager. The managers, who didn't code, they just handled admin and managed clients, made up nearly 40% of the company, and they each had their own ideas of what the developers should be working on. With nearly 20 big clients, some of which were local branches of multi-billion dollar multinational corporations or local big names, each developer had to juggle multiple projects that were supposed to be their number one priority. Within a month of working there, and with absolutely no training, I was handed a massive project that involved writing bespoke operating software for an extremely complex piece of custom hardware with many components and modules that were supposed to communicate and work together, all on a framework I had absolutely no knowledge of or experience with. Why did we accept this project? Because one of the directors lied to the client and promised that we absolutely have people who have experience with this type of development. I asked the director why I was given the project and raised concerns whether I'd be able to take it on since I already had three other big projects. Again, mind you, within a month of working there, but was basically just dismissed. I brought up my concerns every time we had a meeting about it and once even in a company-wide meeting, but I was ignored each time. To my horror, I soon learn I'm supposed to work on this project alone. About a week later, we received the 100 kilogram piece of custom hardware and I'm set to work. Whoops, turns out the drivers for the hardware was poorly written. So now I have that to worry about too. I try to juggle all my projects, including rewriting the drivers and low-level code. But each time I get ahead in one project, all my other projects lag behind and I get in trouble. Eventually I put my foot down with two of the directors and tell them to either put me solely on the custom hardware project, CHP from here on, to stop over-promising my delivery dates on my other projects, or put more than just me on the CHP project. I'd hope they'd take me off my other projects, or at the very least give me some help, but instead they begrudgingly agree to essentially lie to the clients and tell them I'm making progress even when I'm not. This does not stop the other directors from pestering me about the delivery dates though. So a month goes by, and suddenly I'm pulled into a meeting with the same two directors. Apparently they had promised the CHP client, a joint effort between one of the largest corporations in my country and a major telecommunications company, a basic working version of the device very soon. I'm absolutely blown away, in the scope of the project I've essentially just started, so they've been promising the impossible without consulting me about timelines or milestones. Mind you, I haven't been given a due date or a timeline or anything, and I've been working off of a vague software spec doc that was obviously written up by a marketing person or team. The most in-depth thing I have is poorly made mock-ups of a handful of screens they want. I once again raise my concerns about working on the project alone and tell them that it's absolutely not ready for even rudimentary tests. They angrily tell me I'm working too slow and accuse me of slacking. Keeping in mind I get up at 4 to be at work by 7, take only a 10 to 15 minute desk lunch, leave work at 6 and get home by 8 or 9. I'm told to deliver something usable by the end of the week. This meeting was held on Wednesday and they'll stall the client and cover up my F up. Fine, whatever, I drop the issue and set off to create basic screens and fake the majority of the logic. Friday rolls around and I'm told to stay late to finish up. I don't argue and stay until 8 to get the basic screens done. I shoot off a quick email to my direct superior, outlining the included and missing features, as well as listing all the known bugs. I get home at 11, skip dinner and go to bed. That Monday, as I walk in, I'm immediately pulled into an emergency meeting with all the directors. Apparently, the client was disappointed in the amount of bugs in the software. The directors are fuming. I ask which bugs they're referring to, hoping to take note of the ones the client considered the most pressing so that I know which features to prioritize. To my utter surprise, all of the things the directors list revolve around the fake logic, which I assume they failed to mention, and missing features. Things not saving, security features not working, no communication, etc. 
I reiterate with them that this was just a mock-up, which just set off the directors more. They had told the clients this was a working alpha version. Once again, I'm floored. I get warned about my slacking and get sent back to work. For the next two weeks, I hustle as much as I can to get things done as soon as possible, often working late with no overtime pay. One day I find a bug in the hardware. Most of the low-level code interacting with the boards were done by an external freelancer that I can't fix myself and immediately bring it up with my directors. They tell me to call the hardware guy, which I stupidly do. A week goes by, the issue hasn't been fixed, and I get the blame for it. Hardware guy denies that I called him. I have no paper trails. From then on, I only communicate with him by email, and the times I do phone him, I shoot off an email to him and BCC all the directors, as well as the clients. One Tuesday, I'm told I need to come in the weekend, without pay of course, but I decline, because my fiancé's only living grandmother was in the hospital, and we were going to make the one-hour trip to visit her. I repeatedly make it clear I'm not coming. The weekend rolls around, and I get a furious phone call from my direct superior, demanding to know where I am, because he's at work and he came all this way. He lives five minutes away with traffic. I tell them I made it clear I wasn't coming in, but again, I was effed by my own stupidity. I never told them in writing I'm not coming in, so they continue to insist I have to come in. Eventually, I relented and went in on the Sunday, and make the now three-hour drive, cutting the trip short with the reluctant blessing of my fiancé. Luckily, her gran ended up being okay. Eventually, every release of the CHP ends up having more bugs, and they end up piling up faster than I can patch them, because I also have to develop new features with each release. One day, I'm pulled into a meeting, once again, and told that the amount of bugs is completely unacceptable, and that I need to start pulling my weight, or else they might regret hiring me. I tell them to give me more time between releases, and they promise to do so. The next day, they're all back to hounding me about when the next release is coming. Remember, I also have three other clients that I have to work on in addition to this SH show. A few months go by, and I'm getting more and more stressed out and barely keeping up with the workload. Then I get news that caused me to get absolutely reamed by my bosses. The big corporation pulled out of the deal because the software keeps having more and more bugs, and each release is more unstable than the last. While the telecommunications company was still continuing the project, we had just lost the majority of a $100,000 a year contract. I sit there quietly and calmly, while being attacked professionally and eventually even personally. After what felt like an eternity of angry rants and threats of being fired, one director even pulled the age-old, you'll never find work in this town again line. Apparently, he knows everybody in the industry and will make sure I don't find work again. I bring up the fact that they keep telling the clients the software is bug-free, stable, and can be considered a version they can use live. I stupidly expected them to sheepishly admit that I was right and apologize, but instead I get blamed for it even harder than before. At this point, they're even accusing me of lying to them, saying I'm the one that told them that the software is stable. This is completely mind-boggling, since each time one of them lies, everybody in the room knows they're lying, because we all know the real story, but they just keep at it. After they all calm down, they say that I should seriously consider whether I want to keep working there or not, and that if I don't want to be there, I should just leave. Then it dawns on me that they're right. I bow my head humbly, telling them they're absolutely right. Satisfied that my spirit has been crushed, they adjourn the meeting with another warning and threat. The next day, I hand in my letter of resignation. The company had no HR, so I just gave it to the secretary to give to my superior when they come in, since they'd taken the day off for stress reasons. I also emailed the letter to my superior for good measure, learning to always keep an email paper trail. I know full well that without me, the client will back out and they will lose the contract, since I'm the only one familiar with the tens of thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands, I never actually checked, of lines of complicated, hastily written spaghetti code with no documentation. This isn't really stuff you can just look up on Stack Overflow either. I get multiple furious emails and SMSs, accusing me of all sorts of things. I only reply once in email, to all the directors, with no subject or body. The only thing in the email is my photocopied notes from the last meeting, which ended with multiple notes and a few verbatim quotes, regarding the fact that I should leave if I don't want to be a company man and a team player. I never heard back from them again, other than for my final, pro rata paycheck and small benefits payout. I was at the company less than a year. According to an old colleague of mine, they did end up losing the client. The directors also apparently spent a week SH talking me to everybody in the office. I have since freelanced a bit more, before recently starting another position at an amazing company for very decent pay and much more satisfying work. The second story is, you start at 7, you finish at 7. I used to work at a car company about 2-3 to three years ago as a telephonist on the night shift, doing 12-hour shifts. It was pretty good 4 days working 3 days off and the pay was decent. However, most people didn't take their job seriously. They would call in sick or just not show up for work at all, and especially on nights when there were only four of us. If one person didn't show up, you felt it. I was a star employee. I showed up early, logged in and started working, usually from 6.30. I never took a sick day, changed my holidays to fit the company's needs, and worked any overtime they needed me to work. 
I was so dedicated to my role that I had worked on multiple occasions 18 to 24 hours, as people wouldn't show up for shifts and they needed cover. It was my first real job and I believed in the company. I used the train system to get to and from work and always planned out my routes around as much as I could to avoid being late. However, on this particular day, they were running a reduced service due to breakdowns. A lot of the trains had been repaired using less than stellar parts and the wheels kept sticking to the track when they hit the brakes, causing wearing on the wheels in specific spots. So a lot of trains were out of commission. On top of that, the train I was on had been stopped due to a signal issue for 15 to 20 minutes. This led to me being late. I had shown up about 10 minutes late to the start of my shift. Before I'd even sat down, my manager was giving me grief. Apparently they were mad because I had stopped other telephonists going home as someone had worked 10 extra minutes to cover my shift. As two people were ill and couldn't make it in. Now, I hate being late. I was already peeved off that I was late, but my manager giving me trouble as soon as I walked through the door just irritated me even more. My reply to him was as follows. Apologies I was late. However, how many times have I ever been late? I show up 30 minutes before my shift every day. I've stayed late to cover days before the train had an issue and it was out of my control. I was stuck underground with no signal to call or text to let you know. My manager didn't give an F. Their reply to me was, you start at 7, you finish at 7. You're in early on your own time. Those times you've stayed behind, you've been paid and no one asked you to. Okay then, was my reply. The next day was extremely busy. My colleague had left and only one of the morning guys had shown up for his shift to take over. As he sat down, I began to pack up. At 7 a.m. on the dot, I left. As I usually helped out when this happened, everyone was surprised and had asked me where I was going. My only reply was, I start at 7, I finish at 7. This was my final shift and so I was off for the next few days. On my first shift back, I get pulled into the office by my manager with HR. They asked me why I left a single telephonist on their own. I looked at my manager and repeated the exact same words that were said to me. My manager informed me I start at 7, I finish at 7. The look on HR's face was priceless. She was peeved. She already had a staff issue to deal with. And on top of that, one of her most helpful staff members had been mugged off by a manager. She told me to go back to my desk and she needed to speak to the manager in question. 20 minutes later, the manager came back in looking absolutely defeated. He never, ever said anything to me again about being late. Thank you for watching the video to the end. Have a great day!